Well, I'm honored to be lightning bolt number one. My name is Jonathan Rooney Shear. I teach statistics here at Yale, and I'm going to give a quick sort of discussion about some way to use video capture sort of that's built into Canvas. So the program I'm going to talk about is called Panopto. I am not a Panopto expert, nor do I get paid by them to tell this. So I, you know, just ask it, and I'll tell you straight up what my experience is. Um, if you go to Panopto's website, what they'll tell you is that it's the easiest way to manage, live stream, record, and share videos across your organization. And so the deal is it's actually sort of part hardware, part software, part web-based interface. And so um, there are a number of classrooms around here at Yale now that have basically a permanent built-in camera. And in addition to the built-in camera, there's like this box, which is basically it's like a computer with a big hard drive. And the computer with the big hard drive is then tied in not only to the camera, but also to whatever is being presented in the classroom. So essentially, it's a box that will capture what's the camera, whatever mic you're wearing in the classroom, and whatever is going up on the screen. It sort of automatically captures all of those things. Now, it's also software that you don't have to have on your computer. I do on mine, which means you can also use it to do a quick video capture of yourself just through your own kind of camera. So if you wanted to respond to questions that students posed online, or like, I got the feeling in class, you didn't get this today, here's three minutes of sort of response. Very easy then to upload onto Canvas. And so it's also then um, a web-based interface, which is part of what I really like. It's built into Canvas, which is, it's a great way to sort of grab the videos automatically from those specialized classrooms. Or you can upload your own videos that you make yourself. I often use a program called Camtasia, which is frankly a great sort of video editing software program that I use for making sort of high quality content videos that I use. But Panopto is a great way to sort of organize those. It's also a great way just to sort of watch the videos, so it's also the interface that students use to actually sort of experience video capture. I'd say it's also John Harford, if he's not here, it's like find him, because he's, he's the dude rocking right out there who's one of our local Panopto experts, and he's been awesome for sort of helping me integrate this. So um, I sort of used Panopto video capture in three classes over the last 12 months. One of them is a huge class, about 250 students, STAT 10X. It's basically intro stats for mostly undergrads. I also have then a flipped version of intro stats, which is mostly grad students, but a few undergrads. This particular class, actually, I used that program Camtasia to make 50 sort of high quality content videos that students watch before class. And then the class time is used to sort of run examples and answer questions. Then I also, this semester I'm teaching multivariate statistics. This is an upper level advanced class for grad students. There's about 110 of them. And in this class, it's also a sort of a live class. So both the huge class and then this multivariate class are classes I teach live. I stand up, I give a lecture, students show up at the usual time. But the camera also pops on automatically for each class. And so the, there's a video capture of the lecture as well. So, um, uh, so what I used in this sort of STAT 10X class in multivariate, so I captured the videos, they showed up automatically. One of the things that's great about the integration of Panopto into Canvas is that literally in week one, I spent 20 minutes and pre-programmed every time that the camera needed to show up or turn on in a particular classroom, and that was the last I thought about it. So otherwise, I just show up to class, I plug in my laptop as I always do, and the recording happens automatically. It does, it streams live. It's about a 40 second delay uh, is what I discovered. I hear they're trying to get it down to 20 or so. Uh, but it also then automatically records it. And so the students then can go on after the fact and, and uh, watch videos. For my intro class, Panopto is also just good as a video organizational tool. So as I said, I, I've sort of produced these content videos for the flipped version. But after a couple of years, I was like, ah, everyone who's in the intro class might as well have access to those if they like them. So it's also a great way just to kind of organize what the videos um, sort of look like. So this is more about how do I tend to teach. So uh, my experience with intro stats is I'm trying to create a multitude of ways that people can learn, sort of a stat smorgasbord. And so there, any class I teach, there's like a thousand slides, big font, like, you know, they're sort of like that size. Um, so they can use those. I release them in four batches, so they're always kind of three weeks ahead if they want to read ahead. Um, there is, they can come to class where I'll lecture, as I would usually, and I'm happy to answer their questions. There's the video capture of what happens live. And then for the intro classes, there's this kind of topic, um, topic videos. So the deal is students can decide to come to class if they want, but they don't have to. So if they'd rather just stay home in their PJs and watch the videos, that is totally fine with me. Or they can watch the PDF files. Or they can do any combination of those things. And my experience is that students do all of those. So they, you know, some of them have a particular modality they like. Many of them use more than one, depending on what's going on in their lives and also the topic that we're sort of discussing. 
So um, for those of you who might be thinking like, gosh, if I video capture my class, no one will ever show up again. Uh, so I, that was certainly, you know, I thought, what if I show up and there's just me in the video camera? <laughs> so what I discovered is that in the large intro class, only about 25% of students decided to exclusively watch the video. So they just stayed at home and that was the only way they wanted to use the information. It's been a larger percentage in the multivariate class, so about 35 to 40% of students decide to stay at home. But it's interesting, even of the people who show up in class, uh, every semester I'll say, a quick show of hands, who's watched a video at least once? Now students don't like to raise their hand under any circumstance. And still, 95% of hands go up and say, we used it at least once. Here are the reasons that they talked about for wanting to use the videos. They had another class at the same time, they had to miss for illness, etc. Um, or they might just use the video to review other topics. So, um, Oh, I, what I really want to do now is just sort of go show you what this looks like. So if you are in Canvas, the way that this sort of looks here is that there's something called Media Library here. And so all the videos that I recorded, they just show up like that. And so to watch a video then, this is sort of what it actually looks like if you actually are sort of watching a video. So students then, if they're, uh, if they're watching a video, they get the screen capture over here. Or if they want to watch me, I don't know who would want to. But they can watch me there as well. The audio is good as long as you have a good, good mic on as well. If you're using Camtasia to sort of organize your videos, right here under Create, you can see the different ways that you can sort of make a recording inside of Canvas. So what I, if you want to sort of pre-record, you just go to the sort of the schedule recording. But I've also used it to sort of upload pre-done videos. Anyway, it's quick, smooth. Now I'll shut up so you can ask questions. <laughs> what do you got? Yes. So another nice thing about this is just to, you can annotate time codes to yes. put in to say, you know, really wake up, pay attention here, or this is the example I did in class, or whatever. And the students can also send questions based on time codes. Yeah, which is cool. And partly is like because they have this kind of like these slides as well, they can always just sort of slide along here and see what you know what's the slide number they're on. So a lot of them will have a hard copy in front of them even as they're watching the videos to kind of make notes on. Other questions. Yes. You mentioned at the beginning of the semester you set it out to record. So you thought Correct. the recording yourself using Panopto. Right. So, so how did it talk to the, the box that y'all used? Um, you can talk to John Harford. He'll tell you all about it. But literally, it's the way it works. I'll show you. If I were to go and schedule a recording quickly here, it says, I'm going to go schedule a recording. And what they have to do is for, they know where I teach, so they've given me access to a couple of rooms. And so I just say, in this room, at this time on these days, turn on. Okay. That's how it works. Other questions? Yes? Do you tell the students explicitly that you're going to be filming your classes? And I do. do. you find that has any impact on their willingness to ask you questions? Uh, it has not. The particular groups that I teach, after a class or two, they learn I'm pretty low key and they ask questions no matter what. I don't, and I don't, and the camera certainly isn't looking at them. And in some ways, the questions, I, one thing you have to, I had to learn was the questions don't, the mic doesn't pick them up. So if they say something that I really, that I'll be embarrassed for them, I don't repeat what they said and no one will ever know. <laughs> but I tell them on day one, you will be recorded in this class and you can use this class however you want. But I didn't hear anybody saying, I don't feel comfortable being recorded here. It didn't, hasn't come up. Yes? Have you noticed any difference in the student performance for that 25% or that 40% who never come to class? I don't have enough data to say anything relevant about that, but what I would say is, the last, the last, last thing I know I'm out of time. I'm going to show you is that for any particular video, you can go get sort of all the stats for that particular video. And part of what's interesting is to sort of see just the distribution of who watches it when. So for this one here, I'm just going to sort of set it so it goes over the. Are those in, accounts, or do you have it tied to their net ID? Uh, it's there. It's the Canvas automatically sort of links them in, so it's like sort of set up automatically. Anyway, what you can do here is that I can actually, it's not on follow this whole lot, but I can see exactly when, who watched the video when. Now the video went up here, so these are the people who got right on it and watched it. These are the people who waited until there was a homework assignment on that particular thing, and these are the people who wanted to review because they needed it for their final project. And if you look at sort of usage by individual, you can see there are some people who, they're just learners, they need extra time, and so they'll watch it two or three times. Then there's the people who sit down and they watch it once at a stretch, but there's also plenty of people who like they come, like they want 10 minutes at a time, and so that's the way they learn, or that's the way that they get interrupted. And then there are people who sort of spot check down here, like I didn't get it in class, so I'm going to come back and just look at that particular part later. Okay, the end. Goodbye. <laughs>